play-by-play -play radio man for the San Francisco 49ers, and he is the first caller we have ever taken on the Rich Eisen Show from the country of France. Calling in from the French Open is Ted Robinson. How are you, Ted? Well, thankfully, Rich, I'm not on my own phone. Data roaming is off. Okay. I'm on the NBC line, so it's all good. So let's run it up, man. Let's run it up. The <laughs> Peacock's got some cash, you know. Um, thanks for calling in, Ted. I, I appreciate it. So uh, what is the story there uh, in, at the French Open? From, from my point of view so far, uh, it's somebody coming out of the stands wanting to take a selfie with Roger Federer, Ted. What, 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 what do you take on that? Well, that, that was horrible. Uh, there's, no, there's no defense of that. I do believe, Rich, some of this is a cultural difference. We, as Americans, we, we understand that's a zero-tolerance policy. It should be universal after Monica Seles 22 years ago. It's, it is hard to believe we're still talking about it. But there are places like France and even England where streakers are laughed at when they run on uh, the grass court during Wimbledon. They don't treat it as seriously. And I do believe the fact that Roger Federer spoke fairly forcefully on Sunday about that will finally force the people here to do something. Yeah, and, and, and Roger Federer forceful on anything. It stands out is an outlier because he just I mean, he barely has a pulse, Ted, not just on the <laughs> on the court. But I mean, certainly when he's at a podium as well. I mean, he, what what so what do you think is going to happen? Well, I would hope, Rich, that the French Federation, which the French Federation of Tennis is the body that actually physically runs the French Open Championship, that they are going to have to basically instruct their security people to be a little more intense, a little fiercer about their their presentation. And that you can't – in fact, if you watch the tape, if you, I'm assuming it's on YouTube or online. Yeah, if we've you go seen back it. and watch this again from Sunday of, the, of this young boy running out to Federer, once security finally reacts, they push the boy away, and he walks back along the court again toward his seat. Nobody took him off the court, and that's what was so difficult for all of us to to digest. Yeah, especially, I mean, look, I understand there's cultural differences, but, I mean, Monica Seles got stabbed in the back. This guy's got a good, thank God he was just armed only with, with, a, with a cell phone, Ted. No, no, I, Rich, trust me, we, we were, all, were all in agreement on this. Two years ago during the French Open final, during the final here, a, a knucklehead ran out onto the court, carrying what turned out to be a firework, a sparkling firework. But in the flash second, none of us knew what that was. And Rafael Nadal, who was playing the final, was so scared he ran back away from the, the playing court towards the tunnel. And that's, that's the, the, the lunacy of this, is that it has happened several times in recent years here, and they still take no action about it. Rich, I walked around Paris this morning with my wife for a couple of hours, mm -hmm. and we, you walk through the Louvre area, and the Tuileries Gardens and around some of the major uh, attractions here in Paris. And those military, French military people that are there to protect those places walk around with their fingers, and I'm saying, I mean this literally, their fingers are on triggers of the weaponry they carry to protect these monuments. Well, they ought to do the same, quite frankly, they ought to have that same kind of security here. Ted Robinson joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show from the French Open. So let, let us talk some tennis. Uh, you mentioned Nadal. He's already advanced in straight sets over wild card Quinton Hallis. Um, what about Djokovic, who's only lost this year uh, to uh, top-seeded players, is to Federer in Dubai. Uh, is this his tournament, basically, to win or lose, in your mind? It, it, it's the most puzzling tennis in over about 28 years I've been doing this, Rich. This is the most puzzling major because we have a player – who has dominated a championship unlike any other in the history of the sport. Nadal has won nine times here in the last 10 years, yet it's almost universal that Novak Djokovic is considered the favorite. And that's why it's, it's mind-bending. Uh, Djokovic just finished his first match about an hour ago. He looked terrific. He's the best player he's ever been. And the worst part of this, Rich, is that the, the luck of the draw was bad in that Djokovic and Nadal – would play here in a quarterfinal. And there's nothing good about that for anybody involved. It was just, unfortunately, bad luck. But that's the match that everybody looks at. That's the match that likely determines this year's champion. The Americans in Paris, as we all know, have not fared very well, just in the films, uh, Americans in Paris. Uh, <laughs> what, what, there's a couple, though, young men, I guess you can call a 17-year-old a man, in Francis Tiafo and Jack Sock, who I've never really heard of before, to be honest with you, 
upset 10th seed Gregor Dimitrov in the first round in straight sets today. What about these kids over there in Paris, Ted? Yeah, Rich, I just finished calling into that on Tennis Channel. I'm glad we saw that because that's the one. If, and it is hard. It's hard for Americans, I, I know, to grasp the French Open fully because in the last 15 years, American men haven't done very well here. You know, Agassi's the last man to win here, American man. That was 16 years ago. Uh, we've had Serena as an American woman win a couple of times and Capriati, but Jack Sock is a rarity in, in my time in tennis because here's an American man, Rich. He's about he's 22 years old. He's from Lincoln, Nebraska. He came out of a high school and right to the professional tennis ranks, and he likes playing on clay. And that is so rare to hear because we know in America it's difficult to find clay to play on. There is no red clay in the United States, which is the surface that this championship's played on. But Jack Sock says, I like playing on it, and he actually plays well on it. And the, he just today had the biggest win of his career. Uh, and it, you hope. I mean, it's maybe too soon to expect, but you hope it's the kind of win that could fuel him to make a run into the second week of a major. And I'll be honest with you, Rich, if we had one, if not two American men that could just make the second week here, sure. which is basically the final eight, that would be a step forward. Well, with Roddick from Omaha and Jack from Lincoln, is Nebraska the hotbed of <laughs> American tennis future? Ted? They are definitely the two biggest Cornhusker fans, for sure. And Andy's <laughs> probably laughing somewhere in, uh, in Austin, Texas right now listening to this. But they're the two biggest Cornhusker fans in the tennis world, yes. And Serena. Um, Serena won today. And she's looking for a French Open title. The last time she won, though, was 2002. And she's approaching the status of best ever, Ted. There's no question about it. She's nearing it. She's hovering around it. She with a, uh, a nice burst over the next couple of years, might be able to actually surpass uh, Margaret Court for most singles championships ever. Is she the greatest in your mind that you have seen, Ted? You've seen a lot. No question, Rich. She's the, she's the greatest female tennis player I've seen. And I, I, you know, I saw Chris Everett and Martina at the end of their careers. Um, I saw most of Steffi Groff's career, and that's the person that Serena's chasing right now. I mean, she's trying to win her 20th major championship here, and that would really put her breathing down. Steffi Groff's uh, number of 23. And basically, Rich, what's, what's hard to fathom about Serena is she's 33, which used to be considered ancient for a tennis player. She is so far ahead of the field right now, she's basically playing herself. And I say that because Maria Sharapova is number two, but Serena has crushed her in their head-to-head -head history. And that includes the finals here two years ago. So we really think for the women's side, this is about Serena. If she's in and she avoids that dreaded single off day, this is clearly her championship to win. And I'm sure, last question for you with the 49ers, Ted. Um, I'm sure you've, you've heard, despite calling the tennis, and as you were lucky enough to walk around Paris with your wife, the news about Ray McDonald here in the United States, that he was arrested for domestic violence and immediately pretty much on the spot released by the Chicago Bears. What do you think the 49ers are thinking today when they hear that news, Ted? Well, I, Rich, I, I tell you myself, I, I just think it's sad because Ray McDonald was given a chance last year uh, he, he, by the 49ers, uh, and it turned out to be valid. He was not guilty of what he had been charged of. He then was put on a basically a zero-tolerance plan. He blew it. And he was immediately released. And the Chicago Bears obviously put him on the same zero tolerance program, and he's blown it again. Hard to believe there'll be a third chance. And it's sad because Ray was a guy that was very liked by the 49ers players, but his, it's very obvious to all of us his decision making is seriously flawed. Well, Ted, I, I appreciate you calling in and taking some time uh, in Paris. Enjoy the rest of the event, and, um, and we'll chat with you down the line. Okay, Ted? Rich, I'm going to struggle to make this an enjoyable two weeks. Trust Atta me. boy. Well done. That's, uh, <laughs> I'll speak to you soon. Thanks, Rich. You bet. That's Ted Robinson at Ted J. Robinson on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience. <laughs>